Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us this evening. We have a special session, again, from the National Web Conference for the Brain Aneurysm Support Group on the behalf of the Brain National Brain Aneurysm Foundation. This evening, we have with us Dr. Angela Carbone from Indiana University School of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Angela, thank you for your time. I know lots of patients worry about some of the mood disturbances and sleep disorders related to subarachnoid hemorrhage, and therefore this is very critical to our patients. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, like, uh, my name is Angela Carboni. I'm, I'm a physiatrist. I actually specialize in uh, post-stroke rehabilitation, and um, aneurysms fall into that category if you were to have a rupture or even if you don't and have it identified and have some sort of physical um, impairment, you would hopefully see a physiatrist as part of your rehab process. And one of the one of the things that we address, especially on the acute care side and also in acute rehab, is um, mood and sleep disturbances as they relate to functional recovery. And so, thank you for asking me to come today to talk about these two issues. In a lot of ways, these two things can be very much intertwined, and hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll understand how they can be um, and how we can hopefully help you tease out if it's one or the other or both of these things that are occurring. Just a little background about mood disorders. Uh, there are several, and the major ones uh, that I've listed here are what we see after uh, aneurysm. Major depression can occur up to 40% up to of the time. Um, minor depression, uh, and I'll explain what the difference between the two of those uh, are, is that uh, minor depression can occur up to 30% of the time. Anxiety is a huge component, and usually it is seen with either minor or major depression. Apathy is that feeling of um, nothing bothers you, you don't care about anything, you got lack of motivation, that can occur up to 22%. And there is something that is just starting to hit the literature um, uh, a fair amount. is something called pseudobulbar affect. Um, really what it is, is it's not associated with a mood disorder or, or like depression or sadness. But someone may say something to you and all of a sudden you start to cry. But it's not necessarily something sad that was said to you. You just can't control crying or la and or laughing. And that can occur up to 20% as well. Risk factors, uh, prior to having your aneurysm, if there has been a history of a mood disorder of some sort, your risks are obviously higher after you, you've had your illness. A younger age, apparently, um, is a risk factor as well. There's, if there's a greater impairment with your ability to perform activities of daily living, such as dressing, bathing, toileting, requiring somebody else to help you, there seems to be a, a correlation between that and uh, depression. Of course, social isolation is a risk factor. If for some reason um, uh, you live alone and you don't get, you don't no longer drive, so you can't go out and see your friends and do things, um, you're also at risk for developing some sort of depression. Um, it's not uncommon after an aneurysm or a stroke to have some sort of thinking issues or cognitive impairments that may lead also to depression. And there have been some studies to suggest that if you see enlarged ventricles, and uh, Dr. Cohen can say more about this, uh, on an MRI or a CT scan, that that too may be a risk factor for developing uh, depression. So what, are, what is major and minor depression? Major depression is you have to have all of these. A minor depression, you only have to have th three or less of the uh, uh, characteristics that I have listed here on this slide. So a depressed mood, irritability, sadness. I believe I was reading in some of the comments that someone was saying they were getting angry a lot. Um, that could be a sign of depression, uh, sadness, feelings of guilt, lack of pleasure, changes in your appetite. It doesn't necessarily mean that you eat less. You may also eat more. So it can be before I used to eat a lot, now I don't eat at all, nothing sounds good, nothing tastes good. You may gain or lose weight. 